Oh man. I was I was hired to separate the two. meeting to order. This is a special meeting, a very special meeting. May 15th, Sacramento Yolo Port District Commission and Board of Directors of the Sacramento Yolo Port Financing Corporation, more uh, famously known as the Port of West Sacramento. And we're going to have Mr. Tom Sheeler lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please. All right, we did have a uh, closed session. Ask the attorney, is there anything to report out? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Port Commission did meet in closed session to confer with this real property negotiator concerning the Port North Terminal property. No action was taken. And to confer with legal counsel concerning the initiation of litigation. No action was taken. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Takes to consent, which is uh, two and three. Moved and seconded. Seconded by Mark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition or abstention? Hearing none. It's unanimous uh, support. And we go to item four, regular agenda, regular agenda, and this is a consideration of the North Terminal Lease Agreement with SSA Pacific. Rick Toff. There we go. I have a two-slide PowerPoint that I'm going to use. Um, hey. Hey. Man, it's, getting better. it's it's short. Um, before before I get into that, I just want to um, point out um, that th this master lease or a master lease in general of the North Terminal Maritime Facilities represents the foundation of the new port business plan and an important step forward in securing the port's financial self-sustainability. And uh, after Commission direction last month staff has been working with the port attorney and SSA Pacific corporate staff in Seattle to develop a master lease document that incorporates the business points that were previously agreed to by the port and SSA uh, by term sheet so the first slide here illustrates the the lease area um, approximately 85 acres shown in yellow that would be the SSA footprint it represents the developed existing developed maritime facilities at the port with the exception of the two rivers cement facility which is carved out and it excludes what we're calling sites a b and c um, those are uh, potential development sites for for new projects and it also uh, within the footprint the the lease excludes the existing cell uh, phone uh, tower leases um, that generate uh, revenue for the port and it excludes the the Sierra Northern Railroad operating agreement so I'll just briefly um, go over the primary business terms of the lease um, it's it's really a, a simple document it's a, it's a triple net uh, lease um, in which the lessee is responsible for all costs associated with the, the maritime operation on the North Terminal with an annual rent payment of $650,000 that's escalated by 1% per year. It's a minimum five-year deal. Um, SSA can extend that at their option for an additional five-year period. Beyond that, there are two mutual five-year option periods to take it to a maximum of 20 years. There's a revenue share provision that would provide 25% uh, uh, above $2 million um, to the port. That $2 million is the existing uh, 
business level at the port. So um, we're hopeful that through new business, there's an additional $100,000, $200,000 in additional revenues. The existing uh, debt to SSA for conveyor system improvements is forgiven. Facility maintenance, uh, with the exception of major structural of docks and piers, buildings, and, and primary utility systems are the responsibility of SSA, as uh, would be utilities and security. SSA um, has agreed to purchase our existing PM10 air credits um, at cost for $50,000. And finally, they um, within six months have agreed to do a comprehensive market study for the container barge service, which is important to, to all of us to get that uh, service up and running. So with that, uh, just conclude that this, uh, this agreement was carefully structured to reflect the goals of the new business plan, and staff is recommending its approval this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we, I go to turn to the commission, I do want to uh, Thank you and Aaron and, and the other folks I know you worked with to uh, bring this forward. A lot of hard work. I'm, I'm very impressed uh, with uh, quality, so good for you. I will turn to the commission and see if there are any questions first. Yes, Mark. Uh, thank you. Um, on the solar uh, purchase agreement, is there any reason to believe that um, West Sacramento Solar would not assign this to SSA? We don't think so. Um, and if, if for some reason they did, we would simply pass through those um, invoices to SSA okay, directly. So plan yeah. that. Okay, that's fine. Other questions? Yeah. Comment? Yes. Yeah, just a comment. I, I would echo uh, Chairman McGowan's uh, points about the the work and the product that's come together, come before us very quickly. I mean, I think this this thing has moved very fast. So, uh, thank you for the work. It's, it's a good product. Um, <clears throat> the one question that I, I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. The one question that isn't addressed, and I've brought it up, is the um, the the community. You know, we, we value the the port for several reasons, but one of which is it's a community asset, and I know the the uh, the, the potential for using it as such um, isn't first and foremost, but it, it needs to be in there somewhere, and I just don't see any reference to um, how that's going to be maintained. And I know the the lease before us this evening. The footprint doesn't include any recreational aspects in it, but nonetheless, the recreation opportunities in that same body of water and on the perimeter exist, and we want to preserve them. And I know that there are some existing clubs, there are some existing opportunities, and I just want to make sure that those are being preserved. I know in your <clears throat> in one of the documents in here, uh, I thought I read it, where there is a, some grant funds to do some stuff. But it's not referenced specifically, or doesn't rec doesn't speak specifically to any of the recreational opportunities. At least I couldn't figure out how it would be used, and I just want to see what your thoughts are, or what the conversations have been regarding preserving that and preserving the existing clubs, and making sure that they are uh, uh, able to function and be able to pro provide that service to the community. Right. So as you as you pointed out, the the boat clubs, the existing boat clubs, and their areas outside of SSA's footprint, and their rights to the water. Um, for recreational use are unaffected by uh, the lease with SSA. So um, the, the grant funding that you alluded to is, is um, for cleanup of uh, derelict vessels in Lake Washington, which will uh, enhance the, the recreational experience out there and provide opportunities for expansion. So that, that's very much uh, it's part of the business plan. Um, SSA is aware of that, and I don't see any conflicts. Okay, and I guess it's not directly affected, and I, I, I don't want to quite let it go yet, because the, the, the primary access road to where the clubs are currently housed has been sort of shifted, and then it's been moved, and now it's a, there's, there's some K-rails that force everybody around, and I just want to make sure that that stays um, on the radar as folks are trying to figure out how to navigate through there, and you got, you know, 100 cars or so every, every day trying to navigate through that system, so I just want to make sure that as, the, as, as we go down this path, presumably that we make sure that the clubs are being brought into the conversation so that we're not squeezing them out because I think that is the that is our primary link to the recreational opportunities we don't have a whole lot else right now other than just fishing on the shore um, 
but, but I, I, so I'm going to continue to bring this up. And I'd love to find some way to include something that says in a more meaningful way that SSA is interested in preserving or supporting or enhancing um, the, 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 the recreational component that I think is essential for, for people here that uh, um, would love to get access but, but can't for all those reasons I've mentioned. All right. I'm happy to go into more comments. I do have one request to speak. Perhaps we could take that and then we could come back to further uh, either questions or comments. And Mr. Campbell, you here this evening? I think I saw you there. Yeah, pal. Local 18. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, Commissioners. President of Local 18, Tim Campbell. Uh, your guys' geographical map doesn't match the jurisdiction geographical map of the ILW Local 18. So I just want that put in there in the preservation. We've had letters going back and forth with uh, Marty Tuttle. So we're not in agreement with uh, whatever letter you guys put and map out in green and what's in yellow. I've worked in those areas my whole life. So for somebody to just think they're going to chop off that and it's going to go away, <clears throat> ain't going to happen. We're going to fight this thing to the end with the international. So uh, we're not going to tolerate this uh, jurisdiction going somewhere else and somebody else taking something. It ain't going to happen on my watch. So I just want to let you guys you know that you're going to be in for a fight over this stuff if this continues. Thank you, Tim. Okay, other questions or comments? Yeah, uh, can you uh, given the, the the comments that were just made, uh, you know, the um, we've had a extensive review of a couple of, of two uh, strong proposals for this work, and the commission provided uh, conceptual uh, direction at, the, at our last meeting to move forward with an agreement with SSA, which, the, as has been um, said, is you've done. Uh, the staff's done a, a, a tremendous job of, of producing an agreement and quick turnaround, and the, and, our, and the partners at SSA have been very um, forthcoming, cooperative, and, and focused on this as well. Um, but our intention has been to come to reach conclusion on a new operating arrangement that would preserve the port uh, and pr prevent it from moving into bankruptcy, uh, stop the flow of red ink, and protect uh, the work the jobs and the cargo, the rice industry, and, and other uh, others who who are who uh, are, are who support and are supported by the port. Uh, my, I guess my concern is if we I don't want to approve an agreement that is intended to that we're adopting at the urging of our labor partners, um, and then as as only the beginning of a, of a round of of um, uh, litigation or or war or whatever. And given the comments that were just made. What's the time frame here? Because I'm, 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 I guess I'm a little uncomfortable. I'm very uncomfortable now moving for with an agreement I thought I was about to vote for. Um, if it doesn't, if it does not allow us to have a clean start um, that uh, that moves forward with an arrangement as has been negotiated between uh, your team and SSA pursuant to the, the direction that we've given previously. Well, our focus, as, as has been mentioned tonight, has been to resolve the financial aspect of the port and its long-term viability. We see the master lease of the North, North Terminal as the, the key provision for that. Uh, the other issues uh, uh, we will take on, Mr. Vegas mentioned uh, recreation, Mr. Campbell mentioned the work uh, preservation provision that expires in July. We would take that on as a landlord perspective. Uh, as it relates to uh, uh, the work with Longshoremen, we would consult with SSA and obviously the Commission before we proceed anywhere. But our, our strategy all along has been to get this key domino, the, the master lease of the terminal, in place before we deal with these other issues. Right, but the, this, this does not exist in isolation, though, if, if, we, are, if, if we have a, essentially a, a, a threat of litigation and other actions. <clears throat> Um, that would unwind this, uh, that would essentially unwind what we're trying to accomplish here. This is an essential part of that work, but it's one of several actions that have to occur in order for us to achieve the clean start that we're trying to get to with our partners. Um, and so if, if we adopt this agreement at the urging and the request of our labor partners from our last meeting, and then all we do is next, you know, next, at the, our next meeting, we're, we're at full scale. Um, acrimony and disagreement about a whole set of uncertainties that would then result 
um, it's problematic. Right? That's, not, that's, that's not what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, so that's what I, that's part of what I'm trying to understand is if we're, if we're simply deferring a set of battles that we can't afford to have, if we're going to have them, we could have gone with, if we we're going to have a bunch of high risk battles and a lot of uncertainty, we could have gone with the other proposal, um, which certainly would have invited that. Um, but we didn't do that. We, we chose this option because it seemed cleaner, safer, more reliable. SSA was ready to go. We could make this happen and get to a clean start for the port that, that managed the fiscal issues and preserved the work. We, we, we try to accomplish that, but if we haven't accomplished that, if we are still in a, if we are in a state where this agreement is only round, it's only domino one and the rest of the dominoes aren't prepared to fall, then we have a, we have a problem. And, and I was going to suggest something, but if, I mean, I'm, given, I don't know if the chairman wants to. Well, I, no, I normally wouldn't take another speaker because we've already started our, 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 co our comments, but this is from uh, Mr. Cushing from SSA, who I suspect is going to want to respond to what he's already heard. But uh, I think I don't think we're done with this issue. I, I will I will I will accept no other. Come on up and speak. I'll accept no other cards after that. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. My name's John Cushing. I'm with SSA. Uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. The lease that we are discussing identifies a clear footprint of the North Terminal. That is the only area that we are discussing any lease agreement with. Um, SSA is a member of the Pacific Maritime Association, the PMA. As members of the PMA, we have a con contractual obligation to work with the ILWU. So if there's issues outside of this lease that the ILWU has with the city, we are clearly not a party to that. The lease for the North Terminal is between SSA and the city and the labor that we use at our terminals on the west coast is ILW labor. So I, I don't I don't know where this is going with the with this other issue, but it's clearly not anywhere in the lease that SSA contemplates using other than ILW labor. So I, I don't know what it would open up in terms of any can of worms here. Well it uh, Thanks. I mean, it opens up a big one for me. I mean, the one, one, one of the items on our comparison sheet that, 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 rec that highly recommended the SSA alternative, and there were others, but, but one of the key determinants was uh, the, other, the other concept opened up a whole, uh, whole can of worms with respect to labor agreements, and this one did not. If this one does, not directly by, the, by the, what's in the yellow on the map, but by the parceling of what we're actually doing, which is the division between the green and the yellow, or whatever colors these are, if, we're st if we still have those battles to have, maybe you don't have them, but we would have them, then that check mark on, on the SSA side of the equation is gone. Right? That, that, that point that was assigned to SSA, to SSA framework is no longer there. Um, so that's the challenge. I mean, I understand that within this footprint, that the, the PMA and SSA's record and the partnership that you already have with ILWU, which is important to us too, um, and certain, it's uh, that's certainly important to me. Part of the reason we we're trying to do the, accomplish this was to preserve the work that ILWU has been undertaking as part of our community and part of this port for, for, for generations. So that's important. But we we can't. We, I, for me, I can't vote to do this with the intention of solving the problem and then tomorrow be in. Uh, you know what's been characterized as a going to war, right? That's that's just, that's not workable. Uh, if, we, if we were to adopt this tonight, I think w we would need to be very clear that we are we are adopting this, and we're and, and uh, there is no effect when the work preservation uh, policy expires, and we are no longer doing work as a port. We're simply a landlord. That we that it's not it, we're, we're not going to be creating a new one. Any any issues around work preservation are between will be between SSA and. ILWU pursuant to those agreements, um, and so that's I mean that's the only that's the only way I could see it of, of how we might be able to still do this tonight. At least be clear with respect to what our intention is, which is that we're not having we're starting clean with this agreement, um, and, uh, and 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 we are transferring all of this responsibility to uh, to SSA. And what happens with the remainder of the the properties are not part of this, and we are no longer operating a port 
directly, and therefore, th th therefore, we will not have a work preservation agreement on our on our other vacant properties. Right, which, as you point out, is your issue with with basically anybody who would want to come and make any kind of statement to you for whatever you plan to do with your property at that location or anywhere in the city. Um, and you know, I, I mean, our position would be that someone could come forward and say, on the other side of town, you want to do it? We're going to bring it back to the port. Well the city would never be able to go in any direction. You know, we're, we're simply saying that this is a very clearly identified lease, and we're saying we will use longshore labor. It's our contract that we have with them, and that for the city to not move forward in any direction. Thanks, John. Yeah. Okay. I think, go ahead, thank you. Uh, thank you. I think maybe, um, I just won't resolve anything tonight, but I mean, it, it, it's sort of an obvious thing here that I guess wasn't clearly stated more clearly to everybody, and that is if we should enter into this agreement, the city of West Sacramento and the, the current port of Sacramento or port of West Sacramento structure and entity is no longer like it was. We're out of the port business primarily except for the, except for the agreement we now will hopefully have with SSA to operate what we perceive to be is the terminal work, the, the, the port operational work. That's what that's what led to this design. And and so we're clear, the green stuff is no longer in the port. Now there's a dis, there's a disagreement about who whether that's true or not and who should be doing the work on that green stuff. But uh, I think the to state the obvious is we're in, in, in this new model to keep the port we are to, to keep the port alive and thriving and making a contribution to the city of West Sacramento and to the people who work there. We're redefining. We're redefining and, and, and redesigning the, the very footprint of the port because I, I, it is our intention to find other people that come in to, to, to suite A or to, to uh, site A and B and C and Seaway, and they may or may not be port up, a port related at all. We don't know what's going to go in there be nice if we could bring in some some business that would generate more freight but that's it's but our plan here is not dependent on that our agreement with you is not dependent on that so I'm sorry to hear that there that this may lead to something because I I I to lead to something distasteful because I too have been under the impression that there was a great favor by our friends in labor to, to actually do this deal like this and uh, kind of hear that we're going to go do this good thing, thinking we've resolved everything, and be threatened with a fight is distressing. So that's the, that's what's going on here today. Don't understand it, quite frankly. So we'll see where we go. Other comments, comments, observations. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, <clears throat> we um, discussed earlier about. Um, how the deepening of the channel would occur. And I know the, um, the agreement now um, creates a reference, I think it's uh, paragraph 4.1, on um, the cooperation in assessing grants uh, or um, um, applying for grants or other funds to do that. But um, I think it might be an idea to include in there some language that would show an intention of the party that if we do move forward, or, or there's an intention of the parties that the deepening is, is important, um, to the city and to the port um, and also to the survivability, I think, of that asset. And that um, the parties will, at least there's an intention, the parties will cooperate in, in making that happen in the future. Although at this point, we really don't know of the financial commitments, how much it does it cost. We have a lot of uh, open um, issues with the Corps of Engineers and, and what we've been going through. But at least something maybe a little more um, out in front that you know, it's something we really wanted to happen in this relationship, um, which is happening with a lot of other ports in the country. There is a, a public a partnership between the local entity and the, the operator uh, to help uh, funding uh, deepening. And, you know, to the extent it comes to the point that it's a mutual best interest of both parties to do that, we'd like to at least have something in that language to that effect. I think there's some other technical issues in the, in the contract as well. I'm assuming you're going to fix that. Um, blank spaces and things of that nature by the time it gets to. Okay. Right. Right, 
Yeah, I'll just it's an observation. I think more, more than anything, I, I agree with what my commissioners have already indicated. I mean, I think everybody's going to get a little something, but nobody's going to get it all. And I think this is we're at that time where I think we have to move forward. It's clear the the, the plan that we had w uh, was not working. Uh, come July, we cannot afford to continue to do business as we have. I think this strikes a reasonable balance. Um, I'm not sure what the future looks like, but I do know that what we have been doing is not working. And I and I continue to say the whole no port scenario because I think push comes to shove, we are in that mode where we need to seriously consider it. But I think what we have before us makes makes it strikes balance. It, it it offers us an opportunity to get in the black, which I think we all have agreed we're going to need to get to before uh, it gets worse. And I think this 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 gets us there. Um, so I'm supportive of, of what I think staff has brought forward this evening. Bill, any comments? Yeah, very quickly. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the no port option uh, really <clears throat> doesn't fly anywhere. Um, it could have been, could have happened. Um, but I think we have a potential lease here that will um, allow the port to continue to move forward. And I think that um, one of the things that I've heard as we have gone through this whole analysis, and that was that um, SSA would also um, put forth a yeoman's effort, so to speak, as far as, as leasing out some of the other sites, uh, either A, B, C, parts of them, or whatever it may be, and they would uh, put forth a big effort for that. And I would just assume, and I know I'm making an assumption, I would just assume that um, that would be labor friendly. Um, so I think that. Um, I, I think I understand where labor is coming from, but at the same time, if we don't do something, we're going to lose it all. It all goes away. And so we really do need to do something. And quite frankly, from what I have heard from other people, um, this seemed like a pretty darn good deal from a perspective of not only the city, SSA, and labor. I mean, it seemed like it was a, um, I'm not going to say marriage because a lot of times they unravel, but at the same time, <laughs> it seemed like this was a, it seemed like it was something that was workable. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Any other comment? I'm sorry. I'd, I'd move. I, oh. I, I won. I'd like, to call, I'd like to weigh on this. I'm going to support this tonight as well. Um, and I, I, but I want to, I want to <laughs> stress that, the, you know, you, you uh, Bill, I have one quibble. I think you said that the no port operation, or the no port alternative, was really going nowhere. Uh, I actually thought it's much was much more realistic than than, than you suggest. Uh, it's interesting because I've had because we've been going through this, I've had more comments, uh, uh, c questions, and comments from neighbors and folks in the grocery store about this item than I've had an, uh, an item in a long time. And it invariably comes down to. Yeah, I like the port, but um, you know, why, we can't we just turn that port into condos in a nice big marina? And why are we so? Why are we keeping this port? And of course, I talk about the history, <clears throat> the history and the precedent, and the value of it for for, for uh, the economy and for labor, and and all that. And they nod their heads, and I could tell that they're not totally convinced because at the end of the day, I'm not able to tell them how much the benefit really is to the entire community for us to support a port. A uh, woman when point blank said, I don't see why you're keeping that port. You should let it go. We could build a lot of nice condos and recreational stuff, walking trails up and down there. Uh, boats come in and out, and uh, we don't need that port. And, and, and without an agreement like this, she's right. We don't need a port to cost us money. We don't need a port to uh, be a drain on the economy. And the, and the economy of the community, and we don't need a port that's going to be a great inconvenience to the community and not put something back in. Um, this is a very, very critical first step, and it's, it's disheartening to me that some are dissatisfied with, with, the, with the decisions we're making, but I hope in time they'll realize that, that alternatives to this deal are much worse. 
Uh, it could be a, 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 an agreement with a different entity that I've heard loud and clear that labor was not interested in working with, and it would have definitely triggered severe uh, labor unrest. And uh, or our alternative would be is to do something entirely different with this property than have a port operation on it. So for those, and I do believe in the port, and I think it can thrive, and I, I think it can add value to this community, but we have to prove the case to the community, and I think this is an important step for us to be able to do that. So with that, I would be supporting that if I can get a motion. Well, let me just clarify something. I didn't mean, I hope I didn't say it that way. I didn't mean that the no port, op, the no port scenario was uh, dead in the water. I, mean, I know that it was a possibility. And so, um, uh, you know, but I'm glad we found an alternative. I'm glad we found a way in which we could, um, in essence, keep the port as a working port in West Sacramento. Well, I, I, okay, I get that. I, mean, I have to totally agree with you because I think another set of decision makers on a different day might, might, might much more easily get to a no, no port alternative. I think you might be right. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I, I, I'd make the motion on this that we uh, uh, take the recommended actions incorporating the, in the substantial, uh, uh, in the, the content of the agreement, the um, strengthening of the deepening language and the recreation language that the uh, Mr. Johannesson and uh, Commissioner Johannesson and Commissioner Viegas um, outline and with the direction that we've provided about the uh, ex the lapse, the expiration of the work preservation agreement. The motion is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We got ourselves a deal. Um, item five, presentation of port business plan implementation update. Uh, I'll, I'll take this one. Chairman McGowan. Ah, there he is. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, just really quick on this one, obviously the, the item you just approved um, is a key or the, the most critical uh, piece of implementing the business plan. Uh, so everything sort of moves forward from uh, the change in the operating model. Uh, one, the only thing I'll note on this other than in your packet, you have the, the chart that you'll be seeing every month as an update to the individual uh, recommendations of the plan, is that next month, the next month's meeting, we'll be bringing forward uh, the port budget um, that will reflect not only the 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 new lease agreement, but also the other cost reductions, the debt reductions, and, and the other items that are, have been associated with the plan um, as they are now reflected in the budget for the next two fiscal years. So we'll, we'll be bringing that forward to the commission for approval at the June meeting. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions about any of the individual recommendations um, and the updates on those in the chart, I'd be happy to take questions at this time. Question, yes. Yeah, I, do it, this, I knew I read it earlier in the evening. Uh, the Cal Recycle Grant, so the 400000 what? what? Oh, you, you'll take the question, then you'll defer it to Rick. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Rick, Rick will take the question on that one. <laughs> so we have um, verbal uh, commitment from Cal Recycle, uh, waiting a director's approval for $400,000 in funding to initiate first phase of the what we call the the derelict vessel uh, cleanup project. Um, okay. It's been in the works for a bit. And, okay. and that we hope will lead into phase two and actually a much larger um, grant award to, to finish that project. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, so is there, there's uh, no action on this? This is a no action item, but it'll be on your agenda uh, going forward every month just as an update on on the uh, recommended Thank actions for the plan. Appreciate that. Yep. And then item six, who's got that? Consideration of authorization of an amendment to existing loan agreement between the city and the port in order to increase loan by $1.6 million, blah, 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 blah. Well, um, the commission's already been briefed on the impact that uh, the RDA dissolution is going to have on payments that were previously made by the redevelopment agency to the port after uh, January 1st, 2011. And specifically, the uh, State uh, Department of Finance has invalidated $1,656,097 uh, worth of payments. Um, you have background in your, uh, your staff report on, on those agreements. I won't go, go into it now. Um, as, as stated in the report, um, the, the, the city was required to make uh, payments by May 7th 
uh, of, of that uh, amount that was demanded. And so the city made that, that payment on behalf of the port. Uh, the, the legislation says that the city uh, needs to uh, make diligent efforts to return those payments from any third party. Um, and, you know, as, as we know, the, the cash balance of the port is, is not um, in, in a position to, to allow us to, to return those payments. Um, and so the recommendation uh, before you tonight is to, uh, to amend uh, a previous loan that, that was made from the city to the port. Um, so that million dollar loan will be increased uh, by the roughly 1.66 million. Um, and um, amending the loan, we would propose a, a change in the, the previous terms. Uh, interest rate would remain the same at, at 3%. Uh, we'd be proposing a term of, of 25 years, so you'd have a maturity of uh, uh, 2037 on that. Uh, in the first five years, there would be interest payments only, uh, noting that, you know, it's a very sensitive time for the port as we're turning around the finances and we don't want to add to that burden. So those, those first five years would be interest only. The principal would be amortized over uh, uh, to 20 years. Um, the, the, this item went to the uh, city council on May 8th and the, the council approved uh, the granting of this loan. And what we're asking uh, the commission to do tonight is to accept the, the loan terms that are outlined in your attachment uh, four to your staff report, which would be uh, again, the. Uh, the, the, the key item um, that, that uh, we're asking you to approve. All right, thank you very much. Any, any uh, questions or comments on that? If not, we'll take a motion. Question? I just had a comment, and that is, since as we're wrapping up this this uh, life phase of the port, I mean, the, the, the largest amount of sacrifice to keep the port going for, the, for these last six or seven years has been by the people of West Sacramento, um, uh, both in terms of direct subsidies to the port, uh, financial arrangements like this, which the city council did not flinch um, when, when told that this needed to happen or the loan before that or the loan before that or the loan before that or the loan before that. And it's not a trivial amount of money that the, that the citizens of the community have agreed um, uh, to provide in order to keep the port going. And that's it's, as we've made reductions in road maintenance and police and fire and parks and preschool and everything else. Um, I just, we, we, don't, we never say that because it's, it's so obvious to us that, the, that we want to maintain the economic asset of the port. Um, but as we're, sh but that, that wasn't sustainable. But it's going to be this is going to be going on for another 25 years. Um, that essentially that subsidy from the from the people of the community. And I just I want to acknowledge um, that the, that uh, even though even though they may, they may not always agree with us in the grocery store, that it is the priority that the community has been has been. Um, financially helping to, to make sure that this enterprise continues and it's appreciated. It will, sir. Important statement. Anybody else? We have a motion? We need a motion on that? Move the item. Item moved by Mr. Villegas. Second? Same with Johanneson. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, I hear no opposition or abstention. It's unanimous. Uh, seven, commission reports. Anyone have anything to report? Nothing. Uh, port CEO? That's you. Well, Mr. Uh, uh, Chair and Commissioners, uh, thank you for the direction you gave us tonight on the, the future next steps for the port. Uh, appreciate the work on this agreement. It was a lot of effort. Uh, Mark Knudsen from SSA is not here, but I do want to uh, have John and Frank pass on our appreciation to Mark for his leadership on this. It was pretty uh, expedited timeline, but we are definitely in place with the action tonight to, to start this new era on July 1st. So uh, Mark was great to work with and look forward to working with uh, John and the, and the SSA team in terms of this new partnership as a landlord. Uh, it's, a, it's a new arrangement for us, but we've got a great partner in terms of the operator. And also to labor, they provide a lot of input throughout this process. I don't think we would have been able to move as quickly without all the input that we got. Our next meeting is, is June 5th. Uh, Aaron mentioned that we'll do the uh, budget uh, report now that we've got this agreement, be able to uh, have those assumptions worked into the budget. Uh, Chair McGowan also asked that we provide uh, an analysis of the Garamendi water plan and staff is working on that along with uh, other Delta related issues and I see Cindy Tuttle uh, in the audience. Uh, we're working with county staff uh, on that report. We'll have that both to the port 
Commission meeting on the 5th as well as the City Council meeting which follows uh, on the 5th so that we have a better understanding of the possible impacts to the uh, port and to the community on, on various propo water proposals. Thank you very much. Anything else to come before the Commission? If not, we stand adjourned. Good work, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>